In my previous video, I showed you how to combine the After Effects text engine with shape layers using expressions, so that you can copy a whole column of text from a spreadsheet, paste it on a single text layer, and have each line track one shape layer group around the comp. I also had the coordinates of those groups displayed on every text line and update in real time. That worked great with a single column of data, but what about a multi-column spreadsheet? I told you I would come up with a more advanced technique, and today I will walk you through it. I'll set it up so that we can copy several columns of data from a spreadsheet, paste it again into a single text layer, and have each column follow one shape layer group around. Additionally, we can interactively change the vertical spacing between lines. I'll try to explain everything to the best of my abilities, but if you still got questions, ask them in the comment section. Let's get started. The data in a spreadsheet is tab separated, but we can easily recompile all the data into one single column and then try to manipulate it as we did in the previous video using position animators combined with expression selectors. It's not that complicated, trust me, just a bit longer. Start by adding an empty text layer and a shape layer too. Expand the shape layer properties and add an empty group with a simple rectangle shape in it. Duplicate the empty group as many times as there are columns in the original data. Some more copies won't hurt, but it's good to be thorough. Set a marker on the text layer. This is where we'll paste the spreadsheet data. Yes, I know what you're thinking. Why not paste the data directly on the text layer source? You could do that and easily reference it from the expression on the source text field, do the line-to-line -line conversion, and write the result back as a single text column. But then the output will override the tab-separated data, and that original text won't be accessible by expressions anywhere else unless we disable the source text expression, which we don't want. If we paste the text on a marker instead, we can still have access to the original tab-separated data from any expression field in the comp, no matter what's on the source text. Believe me, it will make more sense later on when we get to that. At the moment, we see no text in the composition window. We have to reference it from the marker where we pasted it. Add an expression to the source text property and type this layer dot marker dot key one dot comment. Now the text is visible. Let me explain this line of code. Each marker we see in the timeline is referenced by its key index. Our data is contained in the comment property of a marker which has a key index of one and is located on this layer. Assign the text to a variable called data. This data came from the spreadsheet separated by tabs as well as return characters for each line. We'll use JavaScript to split it into columns and rows and then recombine them in order into a single column. Create a new variable called rows. Type data dot split, open brackets, open quotes, and enter backslash and r. This splits our text wherever there is a return character and generates a new array with all the rows as elements. As for the columns, their number is the same across all rows, so we'll split just the first one. Add a new variable, columns, and type rows, zero for the first row and then split open brackets quotes backslash t this code generates a new array made up of all tab separated words in the first row add a new variable called my text and assign an empty string to it here we will store the final single column let's recompile the data now We'll do this in two nested loops. First, we will go column by column 
and store the words in each row into a new line of a temporary text. We will then stack these temporary columns on top of each other into one big column. Type for i equals zero, i is less than columns.length, i plus plus. This loop runs as many times as there are columns. Add a pair of curly brackets and inside create a new temporary text variable temp. Now run another loop, this one as many times as there are rows. Type 4j equals 0, j is less than rows dot length, j plus plus, and inside a second pair of curly brackets type temp plus equals rows j dot split backslash t i plus backslash r. In plain English, we go to each column, run over every row in it, and stick each word in its own line on the temporary text. Further on, inside the first pair of curly brackets, type my text plus equals temp. We are collecting each iteration of the temporary text into my text variable. Without complicating the video with too much detail, let's say we managed to finish the first part, have all the columns on our original data stacked on top of each other as segments of this mega column. On to step two, make each segment of that column follow a corresponding group on the shape layer. Add a position animator from the menu and replace the range selector with an expression selector instead. Have it based on lines and erase the default expression that comes built in for the amount property. To summarize, each column segment will follow the position of a group of the shape layer within the limits set in the position property. The position property does not represent a particular point in composition space, but rather a maximum distance in pixels that each element can be offset horizontally or vertically from its current state. We make use of the expression selector amount to determine how far along that distance each text element is offset. The expression selector is just a multiplier with a range from negative 100 to 100%. Let's first set the maximum amount the lines can travel. Add an expression to the position property and for the moment type width height times 10. This means that the lines can move 10 times the comp width to the left or right, and also 10 times the comp height up or down. It may seem extreme, but don't worry, that's an overall limit. We don't have to move the targets, our shape layer groups, beyond the composition window. The text jumps way out of the screen to the bottom right. That's because by default, the expression selector amount is set to 100. Let's zero it out. The text comes back to the center as a block. We'll be using expressions to set the selector amount for each line. Add a variable called pause that will hold the maximum limit for the offset. Drag the pick whip and target the position property. The next part of the code is identical to the one in the previous video. We will interpolate the total position offset in each direction to a negative 100 to 100 range using a linear function. Type x equals to linear this comp dot layer shape layer content text index dot transform dot position zero. Now type minus pause zero, pause zero, which are the minimum and maximum distances each element can be offset horizontally, and then negative 100, 100. For the vertical offset, copy-paste this line and make the following changes. Replace x with y, transform position zero becomes one, and also negative pause zero and pause zero will change to one. 
in the end, combine x and y variables into a two-dimensional array. This is where we left it in the previous video example. This code makes every line follow one group of the shape layer. If I were to apply this expression now, it will return an error saying that the index is out of range. This expression runs on every line and uses its text index number to reference every shape layer group. But there are way more lines than there are groups, so those indices don't match. At the start of the project, we only created as many groups as there are columns in our spreadsheet data. And each column has several rows. The total number of lines in our stack is columns times rows. To have the indices match, we should group the lines into segments and assign the same index number to the lines that make up each segment. Assign the text index value to a new variable called segment index and replace all instances of text index down the code with it. If we divide text index by the rows number, we should get a sequence that matches each segment index to one shape layer group. First, we'll need the number of rows in our data. Instead of entering this number by hand, we'll reference the original text data and assign its value to a variable. Type rows equals this layer dot marker dot key one dot comment dot split r dot length. This is why we pasted the original data in the marker so we can still reference it in its original form. Now divide text index by the rows and round the result using math.seal because the index number should be an integer that starts counting from 1. Go ahead and move the shape layer groups around and you'll notice that text appears separated into several columns each one following the movement of a particular group. You can also notice that each column is incrementally offset from its targeting group. That's because of the leading amount between lines. We just zeroed out the leading in the previous video, but we didn't have multi-line columns there, so a single leading value won't work in this case. We'll need to calculate a unique offset value for each line. Create yet another variable, call it off for offset, and type segment index minus one times rows times the leading amount. Here we could enter a value by hand, but with the new additions to the After Effects Expressions engine, we can now get the leading value for a text layer with this code. Text dot source text dot style dot leading. Now add this offset to both minimum and maximum position values in the Y coordinate. Hit enter. All the columns should now follow their targets precisely. You can also change the leading amount in the character panel and the lines will update accordingly. One last thing. Something strange happens when I slide the leading amount beyond a certain value. Some of the columns jump strangely and the effect seems to break. That's why I multiplied the width and height in the position property by 10. That seems to work within reasonable ranges of leading, but it still breaks after some point. To remedy this, Instead of 10, you can also multiply the position vector with the leading value using the same expression as before. Text dot source text dot style dot leading. Cut this last part of the expression and clamp it to 1 using the math.max function. Having a multiplier of less than 1, 
would make the maximum distance lower than the comp dimensions and would break the setup. That seems to do the trick. Now go ahead and drag the slider in the character palette until you hit the limit set by After Effects. Did you know that the maximum amount of leading that After Effects allows is 5000 pixels? I can't imagine any practical use for it, but now you know something new that no one told you before. And that's all. This trick works with text tables of any dimension, as long as the number of groups in the shape layer matches the number of columns in the spreadsheet. As I said, you can have some more groups than columns, it won't break the setup, but it's good to be thorough. I'm sure there are a lot of uses for text tables, especially sport-related projects, and this technique should help you keep a more manageable comp with way fewer text layers and no need to copy-paste each data cell of the spreadsheet into every layer. I try to keep the video as short as possible. I hope I didn't bore anyone with all the details. The next step in line should be animation, but that's for another time. Ask any questions that might arise in the comments and, as always, if you find the information useful, please share the knowledge.